is a look at Netflix's weekly chart versus uh, Blockbusters, right? <laughs> when Netflix went public and what happened. Right. So we're looking at something here that some, if you've gone to the Master Trader Program or even read my book, you know, this is something that I've talked about many times. Um, we're going to lead up to the uh, controversial upstart in a minute. Um, that's where this is going. So, but taking a look at Blockbuster here real quick, you can see that Netflix went IPO right around almost to the day. I think it was seven days that Blockbuster topped. This is that, that paradigm shift. But there's a few very interesting things about this. One is the intelligence in the market that Netflix, this competition, this new, which at the time I could tell you right now, I was there and I was using Blockbuster. It, you did not, it, it was not apparent at all that Netflix was going to be the new paradigm. As a matter of fact, Netflix mailed you the CDs. Right. The, the DVDs, right? So it was it was still a cumbersome model, and we didn't even have the technology to be able to have them, you know, being pulled on down on TV and to download them or to you know have them available streaming. But what's interesting here, and I'm going to show you this later on in in the, in the next couple of charts, you see that the stock, although it made that initial move, it made that nice big initial move, it then went sideways for the better part of what's that eight years. And I actually bought it way over on the right there in 2009 when it started to break out. But you look at Blockbuster. Netflix doesn't really take off and make the big move until Blockbuster is vaporized and they were, they were going into bankruptcy there. Once the competition is gone, the new paradigm now takes over the space, right? Now, this doesn't have to just happen with just a, a big new paradigm. This happened with Amazon. You could look at Amazon versus, say, Barnes and Nobles and the book uh, area and then even they widened their model even to take out Sears and everybody. I mean, it just went and took out a number of the, the ultimate disruptor. Amazon's probably you know top three disruptors of all time. Um, so next chart uh, is where we don't have a paradigm shift. We just simply have a competitor coming in and moving in on a space, a, a niche space. So coach had that. And again, I always say my wife is better at this than me. And a lot of times she leads me to these, these trends, you know, I'll see that she's has a new, has a new purse, you know, and, and Oh, is that hot right now? Yeah. And I go and, Oh, there's a, actually it's a, it's been a recent IPO, you know, something like that. But that, that's what happened with, with cores. Um, I didn't know much about it. I learned more of it from my wife and how it was in that space where coach had that, I don't know, 300 to $600 bag. And there wasn't much competition. At least you probably know this, of course, uh, you'd be an expert more than all of us. Um, and then course came in and there was a competition in that space that coach really just had their own little niche. There really wasn't much competition there. Now, all of a sudden there's competition and they took over. Look at the difference how, and, and again, look at the IPO. It goes IPO and coach tops right after course goes IPO. Look at the intelligence in the market and then look forward. Coach goes down 56% while cores goes up 300 plus percent in the exact same industry in, in the same niche market with almost the same exact product, just a different label on it. So now let's fast forward to current. And I don't like the, uh, yep, let's fast. Okay. So this here now, again, I don't like the recent action, of course, the, uh, that we've seen in this upstart, but what I'm looking at with Upstart, and this is something that I've been trying to talk about recently about how this could be a paradigm shift. But keep in mind, this is the important part. Keep in mind what Netflix, how Netflix had that initial move, and then it went dead for eight years. This could be a scenario that happens with Upstart. Maybe Upstart makes this original move and then goes dead for a number of years until the FICO score, the loan officer model, uh, uh, becomes the old way and this new uh, algorithmic AI way of determining credit worthiness and making loans becomes the new way. It, it still might be early, even though you've seen this big move. So again, with you know not getting into deep about Upstart, but I said this recently that um, you know I came about looking at Upstart because I'm partners in a car dealership and we use this technology. We're actually starting with Upstart on Jan one, and we've been onboarding for the last you know month or so. So, but the thing that got me so interested, and I feel like this is a big disruptor, is that when you get a loan, you know, a FICO score does only looks at a very small amount of things, your you know income to debt ratio, those things, and then the loan officer, you know, only can look at so many things. 
The upstart technology has 1,400, somewhere around 1,400 variables. They'll look at your loan and they'll say, you know, you have a loan of say $50,000, but they'll also check these, these algorithms will check. Where did you go to school? Did you go to college? You went to Yale. So the likelihood of you paying back that, that loan and going out and getting a good job, if you graduated from Yale, you're probably going to be a doctor, a lawyer, you're going to make a large income. So the likelihood of paying back that loan is way greater than someone who didn't go to didn't go to an Ivy League university and has a fifty thousand dollar loan that will never get picked up in a FICO score. That's not going to get picked up by a loan officer. Now that's just one variable. They also look back. They look at where your parents went to school, your grandparents went to school. If you've got a good lineage, I mean, there's like all these variables, over a thousand variables. Sometimes I'm told from Upstart, there's like fourteen hundred variables. So just a much much better efficient way of determining credit worthiness. And then all this happens in one second, in a split second. And at the retail level, which we're going to have in our, our car dealership, where you on an iPad, consumer comes in, sticks their information, and it figures all this out, not only gives them an answer right then and there, but then compares it to a traditional loan, it will compare it to the competition. To me, this is a, you know, and now here's the real key. <laughs> it's showing up in the market. Th this would be great. I mean, all this sounds great, but if Upstart was hitting 52 week lows, I would know something's wrong. The story's not nearly as good as it sounds. So the main rule is never buy the numbers, never buy the story, unless it's confirmed by the chart. So now David and I were looking at this and David pointed out, he said, you know, FICO is the competition and it's doing exactly what you saw in Netflix, where Upstart is in the uptrend, FICO's in the down. This is Fair Isaac, of course, with the FICO score. So this is the old guard or the old technology is the FICO score. So you can see they're completely inverse. And so this is, I think this is very interesting and interesting to watch forward and see if this plays out as a paradigm shift. Mark, uh, walk us through what you're seeing with the current action now. Uh, like you said, this had a, a quick move. So those who yep. got in, at an earlier buy point versus a breakout to new highs and made a quick trade off of this. That seems like a, at least for the uh, last little bit of the move here was the way to go. Right. So I have to be very careful what I say, because I realize that it's taken very literally and I've got to be very clear. So I bought Upstart um, back. Let's get the exact date. First of all, uh, what was it? Here it is. Uh, 10, 12, 10, 12. So if you can mark that on the chart. Where we, right. had this, we were talking about it on that day right, right there coming out coming out of that this is a little power play and coming out of this is my signature cheat if you will so this has the earnings this has sales it has margins it's got this great story it's got the estimates breakout year it, it's really hitting on all the cylinders right comes out of a nice power play so this ran up and then of course on this day right here that that day where it uh, it, it stalled out on the fourth day we actually took off 75 percent of the position uh early in the day. This would actually be prior to my, uh, what's becoming a famous CNBC episode. Um, we had already uh, gotten out of most of the stock uh, because, and I said on CNBC and I, you know, again, I have to be careful what I say and, and also uh, maybe be a little more clear. Um, this was extended. I said it extended mm -hmm. ahead of itself. That means avoid. It doesn't mean buy. It means mm -hmm. avoid. If the stock's extended, this is clearly extended. And maybe I assume people, you know, know what that means. But so this ran up like 25% in just four days. To me, you know, that's good enough to take some off the table or even sell the whole position. Um, and as much as, you know, I might make this big, long, uh, uh, you know, dissertation or case for it, I'm still a trader. So now this came back here and pulled back. This is abnormal. This is not what you want to see. So maybe this is going to take more time. But on the longer term level, you know, I see something that it could be, uh, I, I would keep a real uh, a sharp eye on this and look for maybe another setup. Maybe it has to form a bigger base. Maybe it's going to stall out for a number of uh, uh, months or even years like Netflix does. And this isn't, it's still early in this technology and they haven't really gotten a foothold. You know, there this company, uh, a big part of, you know, for the car business is a big area for them. They haven't even gone live in the car business yet. That's what we're going live Jan 1st. This hasn't even gone live. So they're not even getting revenue and earnings from one of the biggest parts of their business. 
So this is still, and again, I'm not, I don't understand fully the breakdown uh, of, of their business, but I know one thing that a big part of it is not even gone live yet. And they're already putting down these big numbers and the stock's already acting great. So maybe the short term, uh, uh, you know, the short term news has been discounted and now it's going to take a little time and, uh, and we got to, we got to play catch up here for a little while, but so I keep an eye on this. Right. So for those who did buy on the 12th or when it was breaking out of this high tight flag ish area, seems like you need to be out. But what if you got in on that last move on earnings and you've been playing this uh, for for a bigger move, Mark? So let's just say you bought it down here, which um, again, this came out of this little base right here. And if this wasn't a gap, this is, you know, this is definitely viable here. Um, and, and, and you got this great buy. Uh, I mean, I probably would just, you know, cut it back. You know, I'd probably cut it in half at this point um, if I was so fortunate to have that type of move. Um, what I did was uh, uh, what we did, you know, on my platform is we sold uh, into this uh, uh, move here. And then that last piece we had, we put at break even. And I was just looking to, you know, if it went, if it turned out to be a big winner. Okay, we've got uh, you know, a small position. If it, if it resets, it pulls back orderly. I was looking to maybe add it back and then I'd add back to it. Um, but, but again, uh, this is one that I took a pretty, a pretty big position size in, um, you know, a, a multi-million dollar position size for my, in my personal account. Um, so to me, you know, making a quick gain, uh, you know, was fine for me. It, it was, it had a big impact on my, uh, on my bottom line. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you want to watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.